Well, hello. Today, making a bean burger recipe. So join in, get a cup of tea, get comfortable, and maybe pick out these ingredients so you can make these tonight or another night. I posted this recipe the other day, and so today I want to show you how to make them. I don't have the finished burger here, so I'm showing you the picture. Mediterranean bean burgers. And they are absolutely delicious and so easy to make. And in actually this recipe came from my cookbook, Let Them Eat Vegan, which had a chapter on burgers. Um, and hello to everyone joining. Uh, please let me know where you are. Say hello. If you're joining in, say hello, say hello. Um, I did a chapter on vegan burgers in that book because I realized after some of my earlier recipes, burgers, even to me, seem to be like a lot to make, kind of too many steps, sauteing ingredients, and then having to puree the ingredients or do another few steps. And I wanted to show people that you can make delicious vegan burgers that are easy, quick, and that they will hold together. So let's get going with this recipe today, Mediterranean bean burgers using kidney beans. Say hello, let me know where you're from. And I'm gonna talk a lot through this recipe, so I'm going to move the camera and show you what's going on here. All right, so we're starting with kidney beans. Now, I like kidney beans in this recipe a lot because they're quite like creamy. You could also use black beans or even white beans. Like cannellini beans have a very similar texture to kidney beans. It's just they're a different color. So white beans would, look, would actually work really, really well here. Um, I had a reader ask the other day about, and I'm throwing in a clove of garlic, about how many cups of beans are in a can of kidney beans. Um, hi, Amber. Hi, Kathy. From Vancouver, Washington, we're like a hop, skip, and a jump away from you. We're um, in White Rock. And Ivy from Oregon, hello. Jackie from Greenville, Texas, cool. Andrea, or Andra, Andra, I think, from Portland, Oregon. Oregon, um, not too far away either. Thank you for joining. So someone asked after I posted this recipe about how many cups of beans are in a can because she made the beans from scratch and measured in like two cups per can. So that's actually a little generous. Each can of beans, and I'm talking like a 14 ounce can, I opened up two cans today and they were 19 ounce cans. So you always have to look at the recipe because a 14 or 15 ounce can of beans, depending on the size of the bean, will give you about one and a half cups. Um, chickpeas are big beans and they measure bigger. So if you think of black beans versus chickpeas, when you take that can of black beans and measure that out, you're gonna get more like one and a third cup because they're small beans, they compact into measuring cups. Does that make sense? Chickpeas are bigger beans. So when you measure them out, they have a lot of bulk and they'll measure about one and two third cups or one and three quarter cups even. Kidney beans is like about one and a half. So she kind of went over in the bean measurement, which is totally fine, but it can throw off like the seasonings and how well they hold together. So, um, oh, and lots of people joining. Hi, Jackie, my darling, You're just around the corner indeed. And hello, Paula and Estella. So um, that's the rundown on how many beans or how many cups of beans. I don't count out the beans. We used to have a game as a kid called um, Don't Spill the Beans. Does anyone remember that one? And it was actually kidney beans, dry kidney beans, and you put them on the top and you'd have to try to not tip the pot. I love that game. I was talking to my mom about it the other day and she said, oh, I remember that game. I always had to pick up those bloody beans. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? I'm sure I tried to pick, maybe I didn't try to pick them up. Either I did or I did a really sloppy job and she was stepping on dried beans. But anyhow, I love that game. So maybe that's why I love this, this recipe. Okay, so moving on. The kidney beans are in the processor now and I added a clove of garlic. The recipe calls for one to two cloves. So here's the thing. The garlic is not getting cooked. So if you love garlic and you know you like that sting of raw garlic, you like that intensity, add two cloves. For me, it's 
kind of strong to use two cloves. So I use one plus our youngest daughter would really notice the harshness of more garlic. So um, your call on that because it's not getting cooked down. And then we're adding some tomato paste. Let's see, um, two and a half tablespoons. So just standard tomato paste. I usually buy organic tomato products and organic tomato paste is not usually too expensive. It's two and a half tablespoons. If you don't have tomato paste, you could sub ketchup, except it's sweeter and it's not as um, thick. So maybe two tablespoons of ketchup and, um, you know, then you maybe not need as much ketchup on your burger. All right. What else we got in here? We've got balsamic or red wine vinegar. So I don't think I have balsamic. I think I'm all out. So I'm using red wine, one and a half tablespoons. So with adding vinegar, anytime with a burger recipe, I like to add a little bit of acid to kind of elevate the flavors. You can't add too much because it will make the burger mixture too wet, right? So usually about a tablespoon or so is a good amount. If you use balsamic, it's going to make the mixture just a little bit darker. All right, what else we got here? Dijon. Teaspoon of Dijon. If you hate whoop, Dijon, don't use it. It is your call. Is it a teaspoon? Teaspoon? What was I using a half tablespoon for? Mm-hmm. Okay, teaspoon. This is a tablespoon, so I'm just gonna measure a little skin. Dijon gives it that background kind of um, slight peppery flavor and sometimes a hmm, what's in that kind of flavor. And we're gonna blend this first because I wanna get that garlic clove nicely pureed throughout. We don't want chunks of raw garlic in there. So that gets pureed first, hang with me. using a spatula scrape it down you also when you drain your beans let them drain quite well let them drain quite well don't um, sort of rinse the beans and and then like throw them into the food process processor with a lot of water clean with a lot of water clinging to them because it just adds, again, too much moisture in the burger patty. Okay, I'm still seeing little pieces of garlic in there, so I gotta get them whizzed up. And guys, if you have questions, let me know. Okay, so now we're adding more flavor elements. So the first thing we're adding is fresh oregano. Now, I happen to have fresh oregano in my garden, which is Amazing, if you think you can't grow anything, oregano is definitely something you can grow. Certain herbs are fine harder like basil and um, cilantro. Those two are a challenge for me. This thing has been growing like a weed. In fact, I had to cut down the um, one we planted, it was two years ago. I had to pull it out because it was just becoming too tree-like and not as much leaves. But I took a few of the roots and I planted them again magic it's growing again and it's shooting up from the ground outside of the planter box so this thing's resilient so anyhow fresh oregano only thing with fresh oregano is and i love it if you've ever taken oil of oregano whenever you smell oregano after that it's kind of like it's ruined it just a little bit for me because <laughs> oil of oregano was so intense and uh harsh but i do love oregano um and we have two tablespoons of that so I'm just stripping the leaves off. Let's get this down to the board. You don't want the stalk. Stalk is a bit hard, um, tough. I mean, you can get some of the tender stalks in there, but you want to get it away from the woody stalks. And if you buy this in a store, in one of those little packages, you're certainly going to have plenty in that as well. Um, you don't even need to chop it. Why am I chopping it? It's going into the food processor. So two tablespoons. And well, I'm measuring real big, but I don't care because I know I like it. Two tablespoons, boop. And if you don't have oregano fresh, use about two teaspoons of dry oregano. It's usually like a one third ratio. Is that about right? It's about two teaspoons. Um, but 
You could also add other fresh herbs, like fresh basil would be really nice. And then some chives. And these are the green part only. You can certainly use the white part. Just know that when you use the bottom portion of green onions, it's a stronger flavor, right? I actually, again, clipped these from my garden because we're growing onions. So I just took some of these, the shoots coming from the onions because they're just like the tops of green onions. And I am chopping these a little bit just to measure. They smell really good. Um, you could use chives if you don't have green onions. But again, if you're using the you know bunch of green onions that you buy in a store, use some of the green and a little of the white. Use less of the white because it doesn't get cooked down. So I think I have how much? A half cup. I have really over that. Uh, or is it three quarter cup? Hang on, people. Um, green onions, three quarter cups. So, okay, let's just say it's a cup today. <laughs> There's no white part, so I don't want to throw out those beautiful green onions. Here's the thing though with using green onions, it's very mild, right? So, instead of using a white onion, if I were using a white onion in this recipe, I would want to saute it first because that flavor is very punchy and strong and it's it's not gonna soften through the cooking only um so i mean through the cooking of the patties so that's why i use green onions here because hey they're quick right you don't have to saute up the onions you skip that step it adds the onion flavor it adds color but you skip that step of sauteing so hello others joining in i see karen uh we're we're making a mediterranean bean burger karen and i put the link in the recipe or in the description and hi from North Carolina, Carolina. Um, hi, Chris. And Cindy says she really enjoys the Mediterranean bean burgers. Burgers, Yay. Okay. I'm talking so fast because I don't want this video to go on like 20 minutes as it usually does. Take a breath. Woo. Okay. We need sea salt. Half a teaspoon of sea salt. And, you know, beans are bland. They need some seasoning, some pepper to taste. And now we mix this together. Okay, so another little bit of whizzing here. And I'm just going to help it out. Oh, you guys want to see that? fully so here's the thing if you have picky eaters and you know they're going to see the greens so you might want to puree a little bit more but it's nice to see some of that texture of the green onions and oregano in there okay and that's almost it we're just about done now we're going to add rolled oats so this is what helps bind the burgers helps bring them together Otherwise, they're very mushy, and you just kind of have almost like a hummus, right? So you put in a cup. I think I have a cup and a quarter cup. Yeah, just eyeball it. I know roughly how much that is. And then we pulse that in. So if you like oaty texture in uh, burgers, you can leave it more um, Odi, as in not pulse it as much, but you want to break up some of them. So let's just pulse a bit more. And mix it around. So already it's become much thicker. You can probably see that. And as the mixture sits and the oats are kind of hanging out in that mixture, it's going to continue to absorb the moisture from the beans, from the vinegar, whatever's in there. And now what we do, we can remove the blade. This one removes pretty easy. Some of them have a, some of the food processors, when you remove them, the blade, um, you can put your finger under the food processor. There's a hole in there and you can hold the blade and um, that help wipe it out. And then after, once it's cleaned out, pop it back down whip it around again and you kind of get all the extra stuff off the blade 
I don't even know if that makes sense to you, but every food processor is different. This one doesn't have that kind of base, but most of them you can almost hold the blade with your finger from underneath. Okay, dicing um, some bell pepper. So the recipe calls for red bell pepper. I have orange and yellow today, so I'm using yellow. Totally okay. Uh, you can substitute that, and it's going to be really nice for color. And the thing is... Uh, red, yellow, orange are very interchangeable. I'd say the only one that isn't is green because it's not as sweet. So unless a recipe calls specifically for green, I'd go with the colored pepper for the most part. And then olives. So we've got a half a cup of olives and drain these. Okay, so I use Kalamata olives in this recipe, and you could use green olives. I wouldn't use black because I just feel like they don't have enough flavor of canned black olives. They're a little bit, uh, you yeah, know, just kind of not much going on with them. But before I do, I'm actually going to take out a couple of patties because, you know, when you have kids, you know how it works. Someone doesn't like olives, someone doesn't like this, that. So I have one that really does not like olives. So I'm just gonna take out a couple of patties and she may not mind them in the bur this burger, she's older now, but this is always what I did. Just take out a couple. And now I'm gonna put in the olives. It's about a half a cup. Those are some anemic Kalamata olives. I've never seen Kalamata olives look so like green olives. Isn't that weird? Usually they're very, very dark and purpley, so. Anyways, you can use whole olives and you can slice them uh, or just, you know, roughly chop them. And there we go. I'm going to shape the rest of these. So you can see the mixture is much thicker now, right? Look at the thickness of that. Like it's not easily coming off. Let's see. Yeah, not falling off that spoon too easily. There we go. <laughs> Fun with food. So now I'm doing the rest with the olives. And I like to use an ice cream scoop because it just makes it easy to take it out. And if you use your hands in there every single time, your hands get so goopy, you have to rinse them every time. And what I tend to do is um, just pop them like little ice cream scoops on a plate. And then when I fry them, I just pat them down then to flatten them into burger shape. This makes it a little bit easier. So these are probably smaller than what my recipe calls for just because when you do the ice cream scoop, it is a little bit smaller, um, but that way people feel like they can get more too. <laughs> they can go back for seconds and thirds and whatever. So, um, and I'm gonna show you the rest of it. I'm gonna keep track of those two lone guys that have no olives. She might eat one with olives, we'll see. And we're just about done here. So then, that's my, kind of my last scoop. Okay, I won't bore you with scraping out the um, food processor. That's a big one. Okay. And that's the burgers. I'll show you now, but I'm not going to cook them right now because... Uh, it's just going to take a bit of time, and I'm, I've actually made these for supper tonight, so I'll cook them when it's supper time. But here are the patties, and when, like I said, when I cook them, I'll just flatten them down. So to cook these guys, people ask all the time, can you bake them? Yes, you can bake them. Just about every burger recipe you can bake. I tend to bake at about 400 degrees for 20 minutes, flip at 10 minutes. Things with veggie burgers, you don't want to disturb them too much when they're cooking. You don't want to be like checking them, just any kind of burger, that's the case. So if you're pan frying them, which is my recommendation because you get a nice coating, like a nice sear um, when you pan fry, even with a nonstick skillet, if you pan fry them, it just, that coating, that like sear elevates the flavor and the texture. And they're not going to get super crispy, but it just, it's nice, right? It's a, it's a better way of cooking them, I think. So pan fry them, you have a good nonstick, you don't need oil, um, and just let them do their thing. Let them cook for about like eight, nine minutes. I think I have that in the recipe, eight, nine, 
whatever it is in the recipe. Yeah, six to eight. And then get under it and flip it. And try not to keep flipping, 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 because that's when it gets mushy and falls apart because you're just disturbing the shape. So that's it. And then how to serve them. So my favorite way to serve them is with um, avocado, of course, because uh, it just tastes really nice with the olives and the oregano and all those like strong, punchy flavors. The avocado is so good with it. But you don't have to serve on a burger bun. You could serve it on like a um, whole grain flour tortilla and, and cut the tortillas and have like a little sandwich that way. Or you could roll it in a tortilla. If you're someone that doesn't want to have the bread at all, you can use um, lettuce leaves, <clears throat> excuse me, and make a burger that way with the lettuce leaves. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, what else? Um, trying to think, I had another idea. You also, sometimes when I do burger buns, if they're really thick, I'll slice them, in the, the halves into another half, right? So that you don't have these two buns this, you know, this thick with the burger inside, but then you've got thinner buns and you taste more of the burger. Cause that's my thing. I want to taste the burger, not all that bun, which is like, yeah, it's fine, but all the flavors in the burger, right? So it's kind of a nice idea to whittle down the bun and have more burger. And here's another idea. I picked up, um, a, this was weeks ago, I picked this up, like an olive tapenade. So if you've seen olive tapenade, which is basically olives just kind of ground down into a spread, and you can do that yourself with a mini food processor, that makes a really nice spread on the buns as well. If you love olives and you want more of that flavor, <laughs> yummy. So tonight, I'm going to grill up some onions. I bought some sweet onions today. I'm going to grill those up. going to be amazing and have those with the avocado, um, some ketchup, um, and yeah, maybe the black olive spread. So that's it. The Mediterranean bean burgers, not cooked, but they do look like burgers, don't they, right? And they smell, I almost got a piece of oregano up my nose. Let's just take that piece out. <laughs> They smell so good. I hope you try them. The recipe is in the description and um, I'll share up for you uh, lots of details in the post about how to cook them, how to bake them, substitutions and all that jazz. Okay. Enjoy. Have a lovely day, everyone. I'll be back when I'm back. Okay. Blessings, everyone. Bye. And I'll get to the other uh, comments after. Okay. See ya.